This is Derek. I hope everyone is doing magnificent. I'm going to be talking about hyperinflation in this video, mainstream media, stocks, Jim Cramer, whatever is on my mind because I've been watching a little bit about mainstream media. Not much, but a little bit. I watched about five, six minutes of it yesterday morning. I watched about 12 minutes last night, Mad Money, and I seen a YouTube clip with Peter Schiff on it. Those were the three things that I seen on yesterday's programming. I was mentioning in the morning they were talking about the dollar collapse. Well, they weren't saying collapse, and they were trying to say it wasn't going to collapse, but they were pretty much saying it's going to go through some hard times, which means that the best way that they can make it look good and that they can't do it that's the funny part is they are unable to do it too much there's a couple people that were saying oh the dollar is fine the dollar is fine i even seen an article now stating from some chinese government saying that they still have faith in the u.s dollar or they told the united states they have faith so either the article is a lie or the Chinese are lying to the Americans. I have to say it's a combination of both, maybe. Nonetheless, uh, there is a lot of propaganda and a lot of stuff to cipher through. I was watching Mad Money yesterday, and oh my God, Jim Cramer was all on there saying, buy stocks. He was trying to diss the people, if you will, and uh, if you read between the lines, for the people that are calling this a bear market rally. Oh, he's now saying it's a bull market, even though we have a declining 200 day, one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, six year, seven year, eight year, nine year, and 10 year moving average on the S&P 500. He is calling this a bull market. We haven't even had any retracement since the bottom, but nonetheless, uh, let Jim Cramer say what he wants. He was, Huge as far as recommending the technology stocks and the thing is is I'm not going to come on here and say that we're going to have a stock market crash and I'm not going to say he's wrong about stocks I'm just looking at possibilities of what can happen he's not he's not doing the same type of research now to me the type of possibilities is the stocks go higher. Now, if that's the case, that's hyperinflationary. The stock market index is also a guide for inflation. When stocks go up, inflation goes up. When stocks go down, there's deflation. We had deflation in 2008. Stocks went down in 2008. Now, on a particular year, sometimes it can take years for the effects to come into play, but we had deflation in the 30s. We had a stock market correction, well, correction, a major crash in the 30s, and deflation came with it. And back in the days of the 40s, we were able to be buying products for a lot cheaper, and the stock index was a lot cheaper. We had a stock index roughly at around 600 or 500 points. And now we have a stock index that are in the thousands of points because it manages inflation. If there is hyperinflation, the Zimbabwe stock market went so high. And you say, well, wouldn't that be good if we have the Dow Jones go up to like 10, 15, 20, 50,000? Well, that would mean inflation. That would mean the printed money we have is worth less. This is a hundred trillion dollars it's a piece of paper the same paper that well not the same paper but the same type of paper and the same way of creating money that they do in the united states and pretty much every other country for that matter so now what does this mean well webbot has talked about uh, an inflationary period coming they talk about how things are really going to start to get out of control later this fall and into pretty much all of 2010. now for the non-americans say in canada in uh, europe and australia what this is going to most likely mean for us is we're going to start to see 
that our dollar is going to increase against the American dollar. This means if you are buying American, you are going to be getting cheaper prices on it, but their inflation is going to go up. So will yours eventually too, maybe not at the same rate, but inflation is going up everywhere. Also, if you are making United States money, you are going to be making less money. If you get paid in US dollars, many people around the world do, your payments are going to be lower. That's something to also look out for over the next little while also. So the big thing is not, uh, well, okay, the big thing is going to be what's going to happen when all of this stuff happens. And I've been talking about a dollar revolution based on a fiat currency. I mean, this is a paper bill, $100 trillion. I am a trillionaire, but it's numbers. It's a piece of paper. That's exactly what it's like everywhere, pretty much. So now a lot of things, things are going to go down like, hey, this is paper money and a revolution of sorts is going to happen. And the effects are going to spread into other countries. It's going to spread into Canada. Well, we're right with them. We're their hat, as they call it. It's going to spread over to England. It's going to spread over to everywhere in Europe. It's going to spread over to Australia, New Zealand. And then Asia is going to have, they're going to do it in different ways. I don't understand the Asian culture and their uh, economic situation as well as a North American one because I focus mainly on North America, mainly because I live here and the United States has set themselves as the number one reserve currency, which has been prophesized to not be so. So the predictions I've been saying for the last year have not changed. They've just been adjusted a little bit. And that is we are moving from the paper system to a barter system to a resource-based economy. That's, the, that's how I am perceiving it to be. Things change just like the stock market. Sometimes you think the market's going to go up. Oh, no, it's going to go down or vice versa. And what I'm saying is sometimes you're going to see things every day that's going to adjust your decision. Okay, the barter system may be a little bit more like this, meaning silver may not be used at stores. We're going to find, because there was, like, say in Argentina, for example, silver was not, or silver gold was not used as the number one reserve currency for their country, but they had some sort of black market system for it to work. See, the barter system is all about a black market kind of system. So it's something to prepare yourself for. What does it mean when people find out that this is just pieces of paper? Because if it was a problem, oh no, we need $85 trillion. We need seven quadrillion dollars. Just print it. I mean, there shouldn't be a problem. If you need the money, just write it down. The thing is, they don't tell you what the problem of that situation is. And you're not going to hear it on CNBC from Jim Cramer because one of the other things I seen yesterday was Peter Schiff talking with some guy who was trying to support the dollar yesterday. I seen it on the Truth FN network last night. And it was just, it, I was cracking up, laughing, listening at this guy trying to argue with Peter Schiff. And I'm like, I mean, Peter is just hot, could not handle what the guy was saying. I don't blame the guy for uh, interrupting him the way he did. Peter, kudos to uh, your interview yesterday if you're watching. Uh, so, I mean, this is what I mean. The changes are here to come. I've been doing a lot of Mayan calendar research. Uh, check more on my channel about that, but the uh, there's a, a significant change is pretty much on the horizon now. There's going to be a significant one that's going to change within the next any time if it already hasn't. And uh, folks, if we're moving out of a paper currency, that means we're moving into a barter system, and a barter system really talks about assets. So uh, and any asset can be different. It can be gold. It can be silver. It's mainly going to be food. And as Webbot was saying, it's going to be like trading by calories. The amount of calories that are in, say, an asparagus plant versus the amount of calories that are in the uh, turkeys that you got. It's you know, What I'm saying is real assets. Food takes high priority. But it's not the only one because silver is a hedge against preparing for 2012. Because if you think, oh, I need all this stuff for 2012, I need all this food. Well, here's the deal. If you have silver, 
you're going to be able to have the opportunity to purchase more food in 2010, 2011, and into 2012. That's the big theory of owning these metals. I've rambled on for a while, but I think I've given a lot of great information. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye, everyone.